all the modeling I did for the house. Yeah, you look nice. like you're doing a nice cooking show right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks for making some time for us to uh, to sit and talk. Um, to let you know a little bit about what we're doing is we're creating a, a little series called Levels, where we go through and uh, talk with fighters and other people in different professions. Um, because you know, for the most part, people only see a very small part of what you do. They see when you actually right. fight, and then they don't know about the grind and everything that goes on before that. Of so course. we kind of want to get a little deeper inside of that to let people know, you know, there's a lot that, that goes into it leading up to that one fight, it, you know, training, family life, you know, you still got to live a normal life and do everything else you got to do. Absolutely. So if you want to start off, just kind of tell us like uh, a little bit about yourself, kind of how you got started, um, kind of, you know, what led you into fighting and everything? Well, um, to me, it was like, since I'm a little kid, like since all my memories, I was fighting on the street with like with, 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 like with, with the poor people from the street, like the kids, like you know, like clean for some money or whatever. Like my cousins or my brother, they were they would like pay those kids a couple dollar to come to come fight me. And then th that wasn't like a bad thing for us. It was like playing. It's like hey, that kid is already paid. He's gonna come and fight. You. And I was like, fuck it, okay, let's go. Uh, and then <laughs> I I used to get whooped sometimes. I used to win sometimes, but that was like. That was like my my older cousins' game. Like for them, that, they were like, "Hey, let, let's make the the, the the little kid fight." And I was like, "Okay, let's do it." And I, I was <laughs> I was like the pretty wild kid, but not so wild, kind of dumb. Because like when my co my cousins were like, "Hey, go do that something bad," I would I would I would do it. Like hey, like, hey, throw a rock. Hey, break that. Hey, do this. And then I was the one getting in trouble all the time because. They, they, they never said like, oh, they never tell my mom and my dad like, oh, I sent him. So I think growing up, being the youngest one, you know, I was being bullied. Not in a bad way, but I was, they pick me all the time. They make me fight. So I feel my, my fighting spirit was fought right there pretty good because they, they make me fight. Like I was in real fights when I was a little kid. Like when I see my son now, he's five, you know, he's a cute thing. Like he don't fight. But when I was that young, I remember I was already like throwing face to the face and eating a couple of ones to mine as well. So Damn, I believe man. I believe like that made me a fighter. And on top of that, my my like two heroes when I was a kid, it was, you know, like Chuck Norris when he was doing a walker around in Texas, you know, cowboy throwing spinning heel kicks and shooting people. And in the other <laughs> side was Rambo. The big knife fighting, yeah. him, you know bomb so i think when i was a kid my dream was to be like a navy seal like a badass like like those guys that go and you know and do everything to yourself and they you know they they put the bad people out and they, and they keep the good people but in ecuador you know no offense to my country but if you go to the military it's because you have nothing to do it's not it's not it's not really it's not really that good like the us or russia or you know the big countries so I was like, I'm not, I'm not going that way. So when I started watching Pride, the UFC, the WEC, I used to watch like every single event until I was, you know, big enough to train. Because when I was like six year old, between six and seven, I went to a karate school right in front of my house. And then my first day, they show us like, like, like a psychic. And then the very next day in the school, I was telling my friends, hey, look what I learned. I will kick them without letting them know. Not being not not, <laughs> not, not, not not being a bad person, but I was like trying to show them. But as a kid, I didn't control myself and I was like kicking them hard, make them cry. The school called my mom, like, hey, like overnight he's becoming a fighter. What's going on? And then like my mom was like, Okay, you're out of karate school. I'm like, it's my first day. So she took me on <laughs> and basically took Took my mom like all like around ten years to let me train again. So when I was seventeen, I begged my mom like, please, please let me train you, to let me go to this gym I found. And then she was like, okay. So she went with me in a taxi. She paid like the fifty bucks for the membership for the monthly payment. And since that day, like I'm not exaggerating until today, I haven't stopped training one day for an unless I have an injury or something like that. But I never 
stop training because I have a party. I never stop training because I have a birthday. I never stop training because I have something cool to do. It was always train and them something cool, them at the birthday, them whatever. And that's the reality of myself. I never stopped training until um, since my first day. That's pretty that's crazy, awesome. man. I mean, it sounds like for you, for maybe not a lot of fighters, or maybe it is, that fighting has been your lifestyle for like a long period of time, ever since like you were a little kid, right? So I mean, for for that, was there ever a motive for you to join the MMA scene or the UFC scene to improve your lifestyle, or is it just so that you can continue fighting and doing what you love? Uh, a little bit of the second one because I love it, but the main reason, like you know, I I will watch every single Pride event in 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 YouTube or the fights, but then I was watching like WEC and UFC like live, like I will like. Don't open my phone. Don't go to Facebook to see results. On Sunday, I have this uh, website that let let me download the download the whole event. So I, I didn't the fights were on Saturday. I didn't see the fights. And when I was watching UFC, at least in my environment, nobody was watching it. So nobody would be like, "Oh, dude, Cowboy won the fight or Matt Sarah won the fight." Like nobody knew it. So on Sunday, I downloaded it and I will watch it live, like for real life. And then mm. I did that like for five, six years, but then there was one fight that I was like, okay, I want to be a UFC fighter. I want to be a UFC world champion. And that was the first time I, I saw GSP fighting. I was like, that turned my life around. Like, I have, I, I like Anderson, I like a bunch of guys. But the day of, I, I saw like GSP, like the beginning fights when he was fighting in Canada, when he, when he, when he was fighting, like, you know, like, well, there was a 35 in the UFC that fought DSP outside the, the uh, Mel, Meljibar, Ivan Meljibar. Like, that yeah. was the first the GSP fight I saw in YouTube, and I was like, wow. Like, that when he was on board, he was jumped to the side control. I was like, that guy is so good, so athletic. So I based my whole career on GSP. That's why, like, most of my career, I shaved my head. Most of my, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, that's all. my, yeah. my, my hair was pretty long a week ago. I, I recently just cut it, and I'm like mm. that. I cut it, I get a haircut, and then maybe today or tomorrow I will shave my head. Uh, but I had my I shaved my head like since my UFC debut all the way until uh, like two fights ago. Oh, and it was, it was all because USP. That, that, that was my turnaround point when I saw him. I was like, that's the fight I want to be. Like, he was the most loved fighter, and he don't have to do any bullshit meter or whatever. Like, I'm pretty good at talking shit, but that's, that's yeah. just a waste of energy. I prefer to put that energy on, on training or lifting or running a couple extra miles because yeah. I, know, I know I'm a pretty good shit talker, mm -hmm. but I prefer to save it because, you know, my kids, are, they're, they're in the background. They're, they're getting bigger. They're learning English. So... I don't want them to ask me like that. Why you say that? Or I don't want to tell them like, hey, don't wash your mouth. Don't say that. And they're like, but you're saying that on TV. Yeah, so yeah. I cuss a lot, but in a different way. Like I, when I'm doing interviews, I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. But it's just the way I talk. But to go and start insulting people on Twitter or, you know, try to get to your nerves. I'm like, nah, I prefer to skip it until I need to use it. You know, if somebody's talking shit to me, yeah. I talk shit. Yeah. Like, I have a little bit of fun. And, with words, like people talk shit to me before, it don't get in my nerves. It doesn't matter what you say. Some people say stuff about my daughter before my kids. I'm like, good for you. Like, those things don't get me upset because it's just words to me. Like, you know, like today we have like everything is, is bad, you know, like the N war or the F war or all these words now that people give so much power. I'm like, why? Yeah. The only power you're giving to this is to the bad people with bad intentions calling somebody like that like for me somebody called me immigrant or or a, or, or, or a black person the n word or or you know or a regular guy they call him like the f word and then people get like don't say that it's really bad yeah but you're not giving power to the regular people like me you're giving power to the bad people that are using that to attack yeah. other people i'm like yeah we are idiots for give power like should be like just a regular word like if i'm a black person somebody call me the n word i'm like awesome like what about that? I get, I get yeah. what happened in the past with you know, with sleeves and everything, but we don't, we don't really. That's not really. That, that, that's already in the past, and I, I'm pretty sure people is better these days, and that should be in the past, you know. But 
Yeah. People use now, how, way too many power to words. So now how big of a difference was it coming from, you know, Ecuador and everything and living there and growing up and then moving to the U S and transitioning to this whole new fight scene and everything. Was it a quick transition? Did you have like jobs before? Oh, dude, it was, it was hard. Like when I, when, when, when the UFC contacted me and they throw me in the, in the, in the program for South Americans to get better and start training, they sent me to Jackson's MMA to test myself. And I'll, I'll be honest to you. Um, it was basically, it was basically like being a white belt, jumping in a gym with a bunch of brown belts and black belts. I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. But there was something that made the difference between me and others, the willpower, the, the chasing my dream for real, not just being there because I want to be a fighter for social media. Like the first sparring I have at Jackson's MMA, I got dropped with a body shot basically in my they used to do five rounds, I believe, like five straight rounds. So it was up to you. You can take a seat if you want. You can go five rounds. And I used to like sit down every every other round. Not because I was scared. It was because I was I was like, I'm not at this level. I'm getting like, like, you know, I used to move around a good kicker, but coming from Ecuador, my basically my training basically in Ecuador was what hit me with my first coach like three times a day because there was no training partners. My two training partners or my three training partners, they're, bas they're basically like three of my best friends. They just helped me because I was chasing that dream, but they weren't fighters. There was a point that's like, dude, you're kicking my ass, like for nothing. And then I was kicking a regular human being ass. I was kicking a fighter ass. So when the UFC sent me to Jackson's, I used to tell my friends like, dude, like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what to do. But... I just, you know, I started getting close to the coaches. I keep coming, keep coming down. Um, I heard, I don't know if this is true. I heard like one of the coaches tell the UFC, like, dude, send this kid back home. Like, like there's nothing to do. It's, it's not even, it's not even green. But I just keep hammering. I just keep coming down because I used to live in the dorms upstairs. I used to keep coming down. I don't miss any practice. Uh, and then it was your strength. Your, strength, your, your condition was on your own. I used to do like three times a, a week conditioning. I find a conditioning coach, ask him for how much was it. And then I start getting close to the coach. Like, hey, how much for private? How much for mid work? And then a couple of years later, here I am. I'm in the rankings. Uh, I, I live in the U.S. I bought my first house. So it's all about believing in yourself. And, and, and if you really want something, you're going to get it. But it's all about don't giving up. Because I could give up back then. And I would be like, no, it wasn't for me. And look what I will miss right now. I'll be in Ecuador being a yeah. fucking loser. But I'm I'm just a regular human, like all of all of you guys or anyone that refused to accept where it was. So I know yeah. I'm not going back there. Like even even with this situation that we have right now, like most of the gyms are shut down. There's not really training. Like there's always a way. Like I won't forget how to throw punches or my jujitsu or some wrestling. Um, let's hope this is only three weeks. Let's hope <laughs> on three or four weeks. And then I went to my conditioning coach house. I grabbed a couple sandbags, a couple kettlebells, a couple dumbbells, um, some stuff for do cardio. And then uh, as soon as I'm done with you guys, I'm going to go do my, 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 the same work that I will do at his house, but I will do it in my house. And then I, mm -hmm. I'm trying to don't get, don't go out. I'm trying to don't go to regular practices. I'm trying to, but I'm, I'm running on the street by myself. I'm doing like nine, 10 miles every other day because if I'm in shape, I can mm -hmm. fight anyone. So yeah. For your your conditioning, like, are you doing your conditioning with uh, Corey Beasley at the yeah, fight camp conditioning? Yeah, fight camp conditioning oh, is fucking great. You know, Corey and them, I was like, Corey, like, I don't know what I'm fighting. I don't know what's going to happen because my fight with Eddie Wyland was this weekend, so this Saturday was supposed to be in Ohio, and then from what I know with Eddie, Eddie normally gives the UFC a date, like I can fight this specific date because he's a fighter fighter. I don't think he can fight in a couple of weeks. So I, I already told my mother, like, look, I don't, I don't know what Eddie's gonna do, like, but I start fighting a new fight, or let's keep the fight if he can fight, but from what I understand, he can only fight a specific weekends in the year. Because he's a firefighter. That's his real. That's how he uh, make a living. 
So I'm like, I don't want to be thinking like, oh, I'm finding a one, and then it's like, buddy, I'm done. I'm, I'm like, I'm throwing some water and making money. So yeah. I don't, I told my mother, like, hey, any openings? Let me know. 45, 35. Of course, not 55 because I'm gonna get killed. <laughs> And probably <laughs> probably forty five because I'm a small like right now, training the way I'm training I'm wearing like, one fifty five so that's not too much for a thirty five, and that's nothing for a forty five or so, but you know I'm willing to fight, because that's what I like to do and I'm just making sure of one thing my lungs are good, and my legs are strong. Besides that, you don't need much for fighting. Yeah, I mean. Like- I am personally a pretty big fan of yours. Um, I've just watched you hustle, and then your your pure love for the sport is what's kept me going in terms of like loving UFC and the MMA world, and knowing that what you do is just out of passion for the sport. Um, but the biggest thing is for me is like, um, how are you doing with the transition in terms of like the quarantine and in terms of like the training? Like, is your mentality still the same? Are you still in that fight mentality to get ready for when this is all over? Like, you're just still ready to go. I mean, you've worked your way up to a number 14 in a phantom weight, correct? In terms of your UFC career, um, is what is it turns does it change the goal at all? Does it change your perspective on um, the fight at all? I'm working every morning thinking that I have a fight coming up. Like yeah. this morning, as soon as I wake up, I drink a cup of coffee, I drink my green juice, my vegetable juice, I let it sit down in my body, I put my yoga mat in the ground. I turned the heater on and I started stretching, doing some mobility, seeing what's hurting my body. Like since mm-hmm. I don't have any real training to go, mm-hmm. I'm just waking up, making sure I stretch, I move my body, I see how's everything going. And then today is Tuesday, so normally Tuesday is conditioning, jujitsu, and sparring at night. So I will do my conditioning later on after I'm done with you guys. I put a heavy bag in my garage. So I'm going to do that at night. And then I text my coach, uh, Colin Oyama. I ask him, like, if he can give me any mid-work one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have it here at my house. Or I drive to the gym and we meet, like, later tonight. Whenever he has some time, he will come back to me soon. So, but I'm just, I'm training. Uh, yeah. I'm training, like, I have a fight. I am keep, keep getting in shape. And to me, nothing changed. Yeah, I'm in quarantine, yeah. but that doesn't mean you have to go eat ice cream and go for vacation yeah i'm no, I'm, sure. I'm, on, I'm on a mission and nothing changing my head yeah no that makes sense man that's i respect that a lot <laughs> I mean, this, this is why sports great and this is what, you, what you're doing is an awesome thing and it's inspired a lot of people i know for sure to keep keep going in the, in the road that they're going towards and keep grinding and stuff like that but i mean also when you talked about it that you don't deal with the theatrics and stuff like that that's something i really really respect and it's why i followed you for so long and you know, your career has been uh, an inspiration, like I said. But uh, for the most part, too, is like what uh, a lot of fighters have, we've been talking to is that they've been having a hard time keeping with their sponsors and stuff like that. Is that is that something that's been in your concerns or is that something that you have to focus on or are you just strictly focusing on training and stuff like that? Does, does um, anything with sponsors affect you at all? Um, yeah, I'm all about training. I'm, I'm strict on that. But yeah, the, the, reason, the main reason yeah. we have sponsors is La Puerta de the main reason we have sponsors is because we need money to keep going. We need money to, you know, to survive while we're not firing. But I just, I just go, I just go with the flow. I, I make sure I'm doing my best. And then the only way to get sponsors is by, by winning fight. So mm-hmm. I put all my focus on my training so I can win fights. And then besides that, it's all about let the things come to you. You know, I don't force things. I got a couple good sponsors back home. Uh, I'm working with a beer company called 593. It's the area code in Ecuador. Um, mm. They're treating me good. Also, I'm working with a company from Australia. We have some offices at the, in Ecuador. It's called mm. Soul Goal. It's a mine company. They're treating me well. And then in the U.S., you know, I I got I got a bunch of things like Soul Ride, like the thing for massage your back and get your, 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 your body healthy. That piece of plastic is pretty beneficial even if it's something that simple mm-hmm. um yeah you know and they might have like you know gts kombucha they, they send me product and that's that's worth the money because it's health and, yeah. and i'm all about eating right and making sure my body is healthy because if my body is healthy i can fight as many times as i want like the person with the person with many fires is like 
they get thick and they wait until they call them to start training or start losing weight. I try to stay as lean as possible without hurting myself and just being healthy, you know, like this coffee. These guys, Mary Jo, they send me some coffee. It's amazing. Some cold brew with some CBD infused. And it's all about having like, you know, a lot of people focus too much on like, oh, I need to get paid. I'm like, who the fuck you are to get paid? Like, let's be yeah. real. Most of the fighters are like crying about getting paid. I'm like, most of those fighters aren't even putting a fucking show when it's about to fight. So I'm all about show, stay ready, train hard. Then the rest will just come by. Like, you know, I got a, I got a bunch of sponsors and some of them is only product, but it's a product I need. Like if some brand text me, it's something I don't use. Yeah, pay me if you want me to promote you. But if, if it's something like defense soap, something that makes sure I don't get ringworm and I don't infect my friends and I'm healthy and my family is healthy because, you know, if I have a ringworm and I hug my wife or my kids, I'm fucking with them basically. So. Things like yeah. defense, so Miss Mary Jane, the CBD, all those things are like essential in your life. So I'm lucky I have a bunch of sponsors like that. And then I'm even more luckier that some of them pay me well. So yeah, I see that point. Like since the UFC took the the the, the stamp in the shorts, yeah, of course, fuck with us a little bit, but there's always ways to go around. And one of those ways is putting big fights fight hard, mm. uh, you know, put in some performances and throw some wild shit that people's going to like because the more you win and the better you win, the more money you will get. But if, you, if you're one of those guys that you just wrestle, fuck people, they don't cry about the money. They just stay where you are. Yeah. And if I get it, if, yeah. I'm, if I get hurt and I have to wrestle, fuck you in order to win the fight, I'm down for that too. But I know most mm. of my fight, the naturaling me is to fight. Is to fight for real. Like, yeah. I was looking uh, on Twitter early, like, Aljamain Starling was saying, like, he's not fighting because his gym is closed. And then I respect that. But Cody Sanghagen needed a fight for San Diego. So I'm training, I'm running. So I know we're not in the same ranking. He's pretty high. But a fight is better than no fight. So if you need a fight, I can be his cowboy. Now, to your point about how you had said you brought up, you know, obviously the way to get more sponsorship and dollars and also just to get more money in general is those big fights and really performing. How has this whole quarantine affected like your personal life and your family life? Like obviously being home now, it's nice because you get to spend more time with your family, but it does take a kind of toll on your bottom dollar. Absolutely. Uh, my last two cancellations pretty much fucked me a lot. Like when they cancel my fight, well, when Jimmy Rivera get hurt, and then I lose my my big profile fight in uh, in Texas. I was like, you know what? I was okay. I had you know a good amount of money saved. Uh, in that time, I bought the house I am right now. So you know, I was counting on a couple more fights this year and be okay. But then the Columbus fight got postponed, which is basically a cancellation. I believe. A, a, a smart company use the word postpone so you don't have to pay the fighters to sign the contract. From what I believe, I might be wrong. Um, no bullshit in the UFC. They've been treating me great since day one, so I'm not crying about it. But if if the question is how much that team fucked me, fucked me pretty much because I was supposed to fight February and then, you know, God will and I will be ready in the next three months. But now with this, I have zero fights this year. Um, you know, all the bills are coming, but how you pay bills if you're not making money? But I guess I won't. I, I want you to stay with my arms crossed. I will find the money. You know, I always find a way. That's why I'm here. So I'm not. I'm not tripping. I'm not worried. I don't have any injury problems. But you know, it's a it's a it's a, it's a weird situation that we're dealing with right now. So a lot of weak people. You know. They're going to know their week and people like me, I know I will find a way. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, obviously like being home a little bit more, there are not saying everybody's flipping, but like kind of brought to the point that there's people that are a little overindulging. Do you have any kind of, uh, um, 
like uh are you binging on any netflix shows are you binging on any hulu or uh yeah me and my wife we started we started a new thing in netflix we, i just finished one like one is spanish one is one show from spain now we're in another one and and we've been on that and then we with the kids we're watching movies every night normally i know i have to rest for the next practice so normally i'm like at some time i'm like i shut the lights off and it's on the kids now i'm like I'm on my own time. I'm training at home. I'm running, skipping a day. And then it's weird because I'm home every day. But then I used to train three times a day. So I got that energy boost hard. So right now I'm like doing a bunch of, you know, push ups, squats. Um, I have some rocks in my backyard. I'm like grabbing rocks and doing push ups, throwing the rocks. But I'm just making sure my body is strong. But it's a weird, it, it's a weird thing being home. I don't know how people can be lazy. I hate being lazy. I don't hate being at home because it's cool to have that extra time with the kids because I won't have this time when things go back to normal. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't get it when people don't want to work. Like, I can live or I can have a peace of mind when I'm not working. So now that I'm thinking like, you know, you know, some lazy people here and there, I'm like, how they can be lazy? This is fucking horrible. Uh, I need to, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going. I can just be sitting here and be like, oh, this is awesome. I can. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, that's like a constant like thing, though. It's like you're, you're changing your lifestyle and putting it on hold. But it's something you've always done your entire life, right? I mean, that's like hard to stop when it's basically in your DNA, you know? That's, it is. Like, that's a hard part. Like, to... And then like in the gym, like me or guys like Alex Perez, like doesn't matter if we fought on Saturday. Like, we're training right away. Like, if, if there's no injuries, we're training on Monday. We're not aspiring or going live, but, you know, I go to the gym, I hit the bags, I get a sweat, I come home, I go for a run. Like, I don't like to go right away back to the gym because I need to, like, I need, I need to, like, reset myself. But on Monday after the fight, I'm going for a sweat. But in the last couple of fights, I, I broke my toes because the kicking game. Mm-hmm. So I go to the sun. I go to the sun and sit in the sun. But I cannot just like take time off. So for us, it's kind of weird because yeah. this is what we do. And, and I saw a lot of fighters that they want to fight, and three months later, they still having a celebration. My celebration is right after the fight. I get pretty damn drunk, and that's about it. So <laughs> right now, that's pretty sick, man. Hey, you gotta shoot yourself. It's hard. Time. It's hard right now mentally because I'm at home. Like I'm just thinking. But I'm just thinking that I have a fight. So when I'm hitting that fucking bag at night, I'm making sure I'm, I'm throwing some yeah. bombs. Yeah, not for sure. Sometimes it's quality over quantity, you know what I mean? If you're getting those good shots in, you know? Absolutely. It's, yeah. So what's your, uh, like you said, you know, after your fight, you win. So like what's um, your first kind of like big win? You, was it your house is the first thing you bought or is there something else you kind of bought with that first big win? Um, I guess, you know, I, I, I drive a nice for runner. Uh but those things are just like I just like trucks, you know. It was it, it yeah. was that at a comma F one fifty. So since I'm a kid, those are the cars that my family always drove. So I'm like, might as well get one. But it don't make my life happy, you know. It's not like that changed my yeah. life. Like, oh, this is my car. I'm not too yeah. much into cars or you know like BMWs or like Ferraris. Like, fuck all of that, you know. Those cars are little, and then if you crash, you you're fucked. So. I'm yeah. not, I'm not a car guy, but I guess you know the buy, buying the house is big because not too many people is able to buy a house ever. So to me, That's a big to, it is it is, and it's something that drives me, make me wake up every morning with with a bigger reason than other people. So and then I, I guess that it. You know, buy a big house. And I don't have like expensive clothes, likes. You know, I have some stuff here and there, but. Honestly, like in fighting, basics always dominate. In life, simple always dominate. So, you know, yeah. if you need, if I need to dress for occasion, I will. But you know, I'm pretty chill in that sense. So to me, it's all about the big things, like the house, like something like this. There is nothing bigger than owning a home. A home. So this, this is the biggest thing I ever did, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm living it, and I'm able to do it. And then besides that, you know, 
biggest thing after a big win is just make sure the family it's okay you know it's okay it's happy it's healthy it's safe and then besides that i would like to fight every weekend yeah now you said in the beginning your your mom was a you know not too big of a fan of you fighting how does your uh your family now feel about kind of you fighting in your career like how's everybody feel about it um at the beginning they were like my my dad used to be like what are you doing like this is stupid like you know you either go to college or you come work for me but then at the beginning, I used to get upset about that for not, not support my career. And when I say not support my career, I'm saying not going to the fight when I used to fight in, around South America or go to my training sessions because he used to pay for my living with my wife and my daughter when we just have it, like when I was 18. So my dad used to like basically keep treating me like a kid so I can train. And that's probably the main reason I'm still here because if you would be like, hey, there's no money. I will have to find a, a real job. But he pays everything while he was talking shit to me. So <laughs> I used to get upset at that, but I get it because I was I was a really troubled kid. I was always always drunk. All the moms in the school don't like me because every time I go to somebody's house, I, I was bringing alcohol or you know or the wrong things to the house. And then basically it was a week. It was a weekly thing like. Every day somebody called my dad, like, hey, your son did this. Hey, your son did this. Hey, your son scratched my car. Hey, your son, you know, graffiti in my fucking wall. Hey, your son threw a rock to my window. Like, So when I decided to be a fighter, he was like, dude, you just want to fuck with us. You, the same way you've been fucking with us your whole fucking life. Like, I used to go to my grandpa's dad, and he have like a huge jar. Turn all that bitch on fire. Like, I would, like, you know, <laughs> I, would, I would just make all the bad things I could. And I, I was looking for, you know, for do it. And then there's so many stories about me with fire or me with knives or me with TNT or me with guns that people will freak out how I didn't never kill somebody by accident. But I was always finding a way to get in trouble. So at the beginning, my dad was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, my mom don't like it. Nobody like it. Nobody support it. But. Also, back then, the UFC in South America, nobody knew about it. And the people that knew it, they wouldn't talk about it. It was something so small that, you know, a couple of years later, I was like, okay, I get why they were upset. But at the end of the day, my dad supported me. And then I think I had to work, you know. My first my first real job was clean the gym, a jiu-jitsu gym. So I used to clean the gym. They paid me. I trained twice a day every day. So that was a real job, but I used to love the job. I used to cling with love those mats because my face were there. And then I was training every day. So I would clean a thousand gyms back then for training. So I, that was my one of my jobs. My other job was like work for the Jiu-Jitsu coach. He used to give me his mo motorcycle. And I used to like, you know, do payments, send emails, uh, clean the gym again, wash his motorcycle. So I have I have uh, I have like great jobs like that, and then the only one job I hated, I used to work like in this government building, and I used to like being like in a small window getting papers every day for people that was like putting like I don't know like let's see somebody st steal your car, somebody bring the paper that the the police radiator authorized, and I have to send the paper somewhere. And there was a bunch of stupid fucking lawyers coming to me. They had cocky, like, dude, do your job right or whatever. And one day I was like, you know, I was like, fuck you, dude. I, so, but this lawyer was like a, you know, like higher level lawyer. He talked to my boss. I got fired the next day because they told him to go and fuck himself. <laughs> then that fucking idiot, yeah, make me lose my job. But I was so happy that they told me, like, hey, don't come anymore. I was like, thank God. Because I was working for misery to deal with that fucking people. So I was like, now is the time to be a fucking fighter and go and go and fucking earn it. But that that that's what, three jobs right there? I think that's it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, work for my dad. Like every morning go to the bank, make deposits, send stuff, grab stuff. But it was my dad, so he 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 make sure I had food at home and I would do anything he say. That was kind of cool. And then that was it. But then there's no better than the one I have right now. <laughs>